to our next caller. I believe his name is Manucha. Manucha, welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, I came on the line last week. I mean, I wish I would see your program dealing with Islam. I, that was my suggestion, and you re rejected my suggestion outright. So I would reluctantly would like to take up your valuable time and show just because to show you that how this position of yours can weaken your position. Ask two questions, and just very simple questions. I hope you will not mix them up and answer both of them separately. My first, give me a name of a reference history book other than the religious books that mention. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's easy. Uh, tell me, uh, Jesus Christ was living at the era of which other famous historic figure? Who was the king of Iran at the time, or emperor of Russia, or prime minister of Bangladesh, for instance? Who was it at the time? Okay, and yeah. give us your next question. That was the two questions. Oh, that was the two yeah, questions. Yeah, two Thank questions. you, Sam, okay. David. Let's take those questions. you want to deal with questions. the evidence yes. outside uh, of... As for the who mentioned Jesus, I'd like to point this out because this is a very, uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, one, many people overestimate the amount of historical sources we have from the first and second and third centuries. We know that the Roman emperor during the time of Tiber um, during the time of Jesus was the Roman emperor Tiberius. Here's a little question for historical research. How many sources, how many historical sources do we have that even mention the Roman emperor Tiberius within 150 years of his life? Exactly. You don't know, we have 10 sources. We have 10 ancient sources within 150 years of the most powerful man on the planet that even mention his existence. So we have 10 sources, and by the way, one of those is the Bible. The Bible mentions the Precisely. Emperor Tiberius. Luke 3. Now, how many sources within 150 years of Jesus do we have that mention Jesus? We have 40. And he was a Jewish peasant, a Jewish carpenter. This should boggle our minds. You shouldn't be asking, uh, why don't we have more historical sources on Jesus? We should be asking ourselves, why do we have more ancient historical sources on Jesus than we do about the Roman emperor? Because this shows you the importance of, of Jesus of Nazareth. Exactly. Now, if you'd like uh, some ancient sources, some non-Christian sources, uh, you can go to Tacitus. Tacitus talks about uh, Jesus and, and his followers. Uh, the Jewish historian Josephus mentions him. Uh, the uh, Greek satirist uh, Lucian of Samosata mentions him. Right. Uh, Mara Bar Serapion, who was, uh, we have a letter preserved from someone named Mara Bar Serapion who mentions Jesus. So uh, these are some of the sources. But by far, the most important sources on the life of Jesus are the Gospels. These are Precisely. first century. And if you, if you go to actual scholars, whether it's Christian scholars or non Christian scholars, they agree that the Gospels, the genre of the Gospels, these are first century Greco Roman biographies. These are people who are sitting down saying, this is the life of Jesus. So don't ignore these historical records when these exactly. are our most reliable historical records. And if you study these uh, with an open mind, you will conclude Jesus was the divine Son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. And we must, if we're going to listen to anyone tell us about God, we have to listen yeah. to Jesus. Excellent. Brother Sam. Yeah, I, by the grace of the Lord Jesus, I just want to add something. Uh, the caller assumes that if the, if it's if a document is religious in nature somehow that makes it less uh, reliable, uh, are we to assume that only non-religious figures can record history accurately? So that an atheist is less biased than someone who's religious? Everyone has their biases. In fact, if you read any ancient record, the author who's writing has a specific bias, whether it's religious or otherwise. So try to brush aside the New Testament documents as being irrelevant because they're religious, this is irrational and it's being inconsistent because this is not how we do history. And secondly, you have to account for the start of Christianity. When you say, well, give me some sources outside of any religious documents, in other words, you're trying to undermine the New Testament because they're religious documents, you have to explain the origin of the faith of these authors. What would lead Jews as well as Gentiles to start worshiping a crucified man who hung on the cross naked? What would lead Jews to believe that this figure was their Messiah when for all intents and purposes he was a failed Messiah because Rome had vanquished him on the cross? 
the only explanation for their faith in worshiping, not just believing, in worshiping this man is because God exists and raised him from the dead, showing that he's not a failed Messiah. He is the eternal son in the flesh. Excellent and notice, point. Notice the, notice the, the, the circularity of, yes. yeah. of the position. Yes. We'll assume that there is no God, that Jesus was just a regular person, that all religions are false, that there is no truth about God, that the only thing that's true is naturalism, the natural world is all there is. And once we've assumed that, then we'll go to the historical evidence and reject anything that tells us yeah, about anything precisely. supernatural or Jesus performing miracles or Jesus rising from the dead. We'll use our prior assumption to reject all of that. And then once we've rejected all of that, we'll say, where's the evidence for Jesus? <laughs> well, if you don't have a problem with circular reasoning, which is the fundamental fallacy in logic, uh, by all means, you can believe whatever you want to believe. But those who, who want a more logical approach, uh, you're going to have to come up with a better method of precisely. investigation. So Thank you for, for your objection. call.